We ordered from AliExpress a DIY kit to assemble an amazing airplane, which doesn't have an engine, but can fly through the air for over a minute. You guys will be very surprised by the results. In this box, there is a bag with almost all the pieces we need. It is a polyethylene wrap that you can replace with an ordinary plastic bag. Then it's a thin wooden plate with laser cut elements of the frame and wings of the plane. It's only one millimeter thick, so the airplane is supposed to be extremely light. Then we have this white rubber band that will drive the blades. And also a little bag of carbon rods and stuff to make the propeller and attach it. And here is the main reason why we'd like to show you in detail how to assemble the airplane. It's the Chinese manual, which we don't really understand. On the AliExpress website we found its English translation, but it has very little information. So we will have to go all the way by ourselves to make it easier for those of you who would like to build such an airplane. There are three rods in this protective green tube, two thickest ones we were trying to fasten together. But the holes are very small and we have to remove some material with an emergency sponge so that the protruding parts of the other stick will fit in there. Now everything is perfected and the front part of the airplane is ready. Next, using a box cutter, we free the two most uppermost straight sticks from the plane and separate them by marking the middle of each. After that, we take out the art-shaped ribs and start assembling the wing skeleton. This is how it should be done. We take the super glue, apply it to the sticks and attach them one to the other. We needed much patience, as this process was complicated and required incredible accuracy. Next we took next two sticks and saw special notches on them, where they needed to be broken and bent at an angle of about 90 and 45 degrees. They have to be glued to the design this way. Over time, we learned that in some cases you can ease the task by putting a drop of glue on a bottle cap, for example, and taking glue from it with a stick to further apply it in the desired areas. As a result, we get such a front wing with a curved top for better aerodynamics. Now we need to loosen the bottom three sticks and do the same to get a similar wing but smaller. The last sticks need to be broken in four places to get a small fin like this. We unwind the polyethylene wrap and inside we see two more elements waiting for us. While Cookie was playing with the wrap, we made a wooden flame of this size. You can of course do everything without it, but it seems much more convenient. Using masking tape, we fix the wrap on the edges of the frame, so that a slight tension is created. But it is important not to stretch it too much. We check if all the wings fit inside the frame. Then we take this spray glue and put it on one side of the wooden elements. You can also use regular tube glue, but with a spray it will be faster and easier to make an even layer. Before the glue dries, we lay out all the elements and cover them with the foil stretched over the frame. Immediately press the perimeter with a finger so that the glue sticks to the wrap well. It should look like this in the end. Now with the help of a sharp office knife, we cut all three wings from the foil around their perimeter. As a result, we get such a beautiful piece, with the wrap firmly glued to the wooden base. Now it's time to glue the back of the main airplane rod to the front. We wet the joints with glue and leave it to dry at a little angle, slightly lifting the tail of the airplane. I don't know what it needs to be done for, but still. Since there are large gaps in the joints, we'll use a regular baking soda from an old-fashioned life hack. We mix the baking soda with super glue and it hardens much faster. Now let's open the package with small elements to install the propeller and glue the nose part of the airplane. In this slot, you need to install the propeller axis and fix it with a drop of glue. In the back, we install a hook for the rubber band, which will drive the propeller. And then in the special slots in the propeller blade, we install the black carbon rods. 
This was the first time I worked with carbon, and I was very surprised by its hardness and durability at an extremely light weight. So now we've got two such pieces, and now mount them in the special holes with an angle of attack of about 45 degrees. One blade was much heavier than the other, which led to an imbalance. We had to remove some material from one of the blades with an abrasive sponge to provide balance. And now you may be shocked, but we need to break the front wing in these places, apply some glue, and then make a stand like this to put it under the broken parts of the wing, so they would be fixed in a right angle. Finally, the front wing is ready. Now we need to glue it to these two parts that will keep the wing above the whole structure. Then we glue the back wing and attach this fin next to it to help the plane to keep on the right track. With these little pads here, we attach the front wing to the airplane body and wrap the joints with string. Now we cut off a suitable piece of the rubber band and pull it between the rear hook and the propeller hook. And suddenly our plane is ready. It is extremely light and weighs just a few grams. Thanks to this, it's supposed to keep flying for a very long time. To start it, you need to spin the propeller with your hands many times and after releasing it, it begins to rotate in the opposite direction thus creating traction for the flight. But with the wire, we invented how it can be done automatically by connecting a screwdriver. This saves a lot of time and nerves. Since it's very light, we should launch it at home or outside in windless weather, as even a light breeze will toss it sideways and break its wings. We had this happen already, so we had to fix it. But luckily, thanks to superglue, it's a very easy thing to do. So let's try to launch it. And wow, it really flies! It took quite a long time to wait for the windless weather. One day we even tried launching it in the woods, carrying it in a protective box, hoping there would be less wind in the woods. But the weather had its own plans, and the windy days continually ruined our launch attempts. Although it looked like it can fly for a full minute or even longer. And some homemade models I've seen on the internet flew for over 40 minutes on just this one rubber band engine. It looks incredible. We will definitely try it in good weather and we will show you the full flight in one of our next videos.